Welcome to the Council of Better Business Bureau's podcast, Better Business, Better Series, where we will explore top of mind topics with business and industry leaders to understand the leading trends and innovations that continue to push the envelope in today's marketplace. For the Better Business, Better Series podcast, I'm Will Johnson. For anyone running a business, starting a business, or just trying to connect with and engage an audience or potential customers, social media has to be a part of the business strategy. But knowing where to start, how to reach the right audience, and what message to convey can be a daunting task. 2018 promises to bring small and large shifts in the social media landscape. Joining us today to talk about how to bring a social media strategy into focus is James Williams. Most recently, James was vice president of digital video at National Geographic. He has built video teams and products for a slate of high-profile companies and is currently growing his own company, Digital Video Strategies. James, it's great to have you here with us. Thanks, Will. It's great to be here. So let's uh, start very generally. Tell us about uh, the big players in social media in 2018, who's on the rise, who's maybe slipping a little bit. Uh, And then also, I I said in the intro, social media has to be a part of the business strategy. Sounds obvious, but maybe tell us why. Sure. Um, So... Yeah, I think I think one thing to to just start off with is to level set around social and video as well, and who those players are. And and really out of the gate, it's going to be Facebook is uh, is the obvious one. Yep. Um, and Facebook is an interesting uh, is an interesting entity in this space because they have such a large audience and they have such a wide reach and they are constantly changing. So they just announced that they were going to restrict the amount of content that's going into folks, new, the news feed. Right. If, if, threw everyone into a, like a fever of, of reaction, as, as, as I was aware. Exactly. Yeah. And so what's interesting about that is I think what they're doing there is doubling down on, on a sort of intrinsic truth around what digital media is. And this is one of the things that I tell my clients is important to understand and to focus on, which is digital media generally is about communities and it's about building communities up. And that's kind of what that Facebook change is going to do. So Facebook is definitely a big player this year. Instagram, also a big player. Uh, 75% of marketers are on Instagram now. 90% are on Facebook. So those are really the two entry points. There's a couple other players that are in this space, but a lot of it comes down to choosing a platform that your audience is on and then really focusing on that and making sure that you're putting the right resources against it. Got it. And so so we know, and you mentioned, community is key when it comes to building that social media strategy. Tell us some of your thoughts on the importance of building community, how to go about doing that. Uh, it, it, it's easy to sort of say, well, we want to build a community, but it's tough to sort of get into the weeds of that. You mentioned different platforms also, and obviously there's different ages, different groups on these different platforms. Right. So, so, and at the, at, at the heart of, of digital, as I said, it's, it's about community. And what that means for businesses in particular is to, is to approach the content that you put out there in a way that will get community engagement. And that means getting people to talk about what it is that you're putting out there, the media that you're putting out there. It's not enough, for example, in my world, it's, I focus a lot on video. Uh, it's not enough to just have a good video and put it up there. That video has to be targeted towards a specific audience to try and get a specific reaction out of that audience. And to do that, you really need to engage them. So the perfect video is something that's going to actually inspire a conversation. It's going to get the audience engaged. And as you start to build that community, you start to build more of a brand affinity. Uh, the thing about millennials is that they they really want content that feels like it's made for them and they want to they want a relationship they're willing to have a relationship with brands you have to give them a reason to have that relationship you have to show and express yourself as a brand to be to make it feel like you're part of their community and if you do that well you're going to get that audience response and the interesting thing in today's world where you're working with these various platforms and the algorithms that drive those, the more audience response you get, the more likely it is for those platforms to promote your content out there into their feeds. So it just it, it keeps rolling along and building up more steam. And we talk about platform intentional content, and that's what you're talking about there, where you're choosing the right place to find the right audience. Exactly right. So with each, the, when you think about the way that you use your own social media, you may be on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram all in the same 30 minute time slot. But with each one of those platforms, you're going to have a different psychological orientation going into those. You're going to have different expectations about the time you're going to spend on that, uh, that platform, the kind of content that you're going to see. And you can't take something that is built for one platform and necessarily put it on a different platform and expect the audience to respond to that. So that's one of the things that I specialize in is figuring out one, who's your audience, where are they located, when are they located there, and then how do you tailor your content in order to make 
that content resonate with that audience on that platform. And that to me is one of the biggest and most interesting elements of digital. Things are constantly changing. Algorithms are changing. Platforms are changing. You're watching Facebook right now move from a platform that was built on short, snappy videos as sort of the king. And now they're moving into this other area where longer form content is starting to build out. Well, you have to choose even within there, within the Facebook ecosystem, where's your audience and how are you going to tell your story to that audience in the right place? At the end of the day, that's really what it matter, what matters most, because if you do that right, you're going to get that community engagement. And that, again, is the heart of any relationship that any brand really should be looking to build. All right. So then how do you go about figuring out where your audience is? Uh, I'm assuming the first obvious step is that, you know, there's mountains of research regarding demographics and social media platforms, specific platforms. But can you get more granular in your approach? I'm sure you can, depending on the product or service you're providing. Absolutely. So knowing who who it starts really with understanding what it is that you want to achieve. You need a goal for for any sort of strategy that you're putting out there starts with an, uh, with understanding why you're out there. Uh, who and then who. So say, once you have that goal, you can start to design uh, a campaign and a video strategy or a social strategy around how to get that response, how to achieve that goal. And so that, so I, li- I like to use the landscape business as an, an example a lot, just because it seems like a, a business that doesn't necessarily need digital video or social media, but but gosh, it sure can help. Right. right? So you want people to call you and, and you, you come over to your house and mow your lawn, et cetera. Right. So your goal is in that case drum up more business, have people call you on the phone. It's not necessarily to, for people to, to watch all your videos, although maybe it is, right? So the land, so, so we're, if we're going to use, use that, can I use that? Absolutely. Right, okay. Let's, let's, let's we walk can do through. something else if you want. No, let's all walk right. through that garden. So the, mm. as you, as you think of your, your, you're offering the services of landscaping. So that means you're going to have, there's a certain clientele that you're going after. It's probably folks that are going to be a little bit older with that are homeowners that, or, or somebody who runs a business um, that yeah. has that, that sort of presentation. And they don't want to do it themselves. They don't want to do it yeah. themselves. So they've got some amount of disposable income that they can put against that. So right there, you've already yeah. cut out a good chunk of, of your audience. Forget Snapchat. <laughs> well, right. exactly. Those people probably aren't on Snapchat, yeah. and they're also not expecting that message to be on Snapchat. Right. Facebook would be a perfect place for that because not only can you a tell your story visually, yeah. and you can excite the an emotional response from putting together a beautiful landscape. If you give people the opportunity to envision what your your landscaping product. Uh, in their house, they're more likely they're, you're creating an emotional response and a connection to that audience. You get on Facebook and you can start targeting homeowners and people in the right demographics, that in the right areas. If you're looking for a specific city, you can target specific cities. You can start to factor in all of these all of these various elements to create a really targeted campaign. And what and, and, and what it comes down to is identifying a niche audience and programming specifically to them. And does that mean spending money? on Facebook to get those specific uh, demographics? Right, so one of the, a place where a couple of years ago, maybe not as important, today it's critical that any part, anytime you're thinking about designing a campaign, you've got to put some paid media spend behind it. You've got to boost your posts. And that's- that's, It doesn't have to be a huge amount of money, right? It doesn't have to be a huge amount of money, especially if as you're, the more niche you get, you you, you can, you know, there's not as many people that you're trying to target. So it, it, uh, it potentially doesn't, you know, you don't have to run up huge budgets to get there, but it is something that's really important. And I want to make a, a distinction there because you're hearing a lot in the news right now around fake accounts and buying views. And that's not what I'm talking about doing. I'm not saying make a video and then buy a bunch of views that are meaningless. What I'm saying is once you know who your target audience is, design your content to meet that target audience. And that's where that's where the power of your communication comes in. And that's why it's important to make sure that you can sort of cut through everything else and deliver that message directly to the consumer. Thanks for mentioning that, because that is a big deal. And you and those are inflated numbers that businesses could use just to talk about their numbers. But it's, it doesn't mean they're drumming up any extra business. Not, no, no. no, no. And and all that's, I mean, it's easy to do. I mean, if you come to me and you say, I want to make a video with a million views, I can give you a number. It's like I'm, I'm coming to you. Yeah, <laughs> but it's but the, the right, thing right, right. at the heart, of, you know, at the end of the day, like that's it needs to be real. It's not valuable, right? And that's what and that it, that's what you want to do is you create value for both the, your client as well as the customer, and um and that's you know that that's where you can really use social media and social video in particular because that just happens to get a much better response from. Uh, from your audience, people engage with video more than they, and, and at least in Facebook, more. And then it's true on on Instagram too that people will engage more with your content 
uh, if it's moving, if it's video. And so it's a good tool to use to reach that audience. You mentioned longer form video on social platforms as well. Let's talk about that a little bit, what that means, mid form, long form. Um, I know LinkedIn has video now. We haven't talked a lot about LinkedIn yet, but what is longer form content? So, right. So there's, when I think about content, I think of, I think of basically it breaks into three different, different uh, sections as you describe. So short form is really, it's content that's under a minute long. And that could be 15 second videos back in the divine days, six second videos. So just real short, snappy videos. You've got mid form, which I would say is maybe five to 10 minutes. And then you've got longer form, which is basically anything, you know, 10 to 15 minutes on. Okay. Um, there's a shift right now where, and you can see this happening with Facebook, where they are trying to get more and more and more long form content onto their platforms. And they're trying to change the way that people approach video on Facebook to adapt that. It's a fascinating experiment to watch uh, happen, play out because we, we built co- video content based on a very short attention span. And Facebook is really trying to expand that out and then and bring folks in to help them do that. Um, but that's sort of the, the, the future, I think, of, of a lot of these platforms. It's where they're trying to go. And I could spend a lot more time. Maybe that's yes. another podcast, Will. But uh, that whole other sort of intersection between where we are in digital media today and where I think we're going to end up in another year or two is pretty fascinating. And that sounds like, you know, if they're going against that, going for that longer form content, I mean, that's going head to head with Netflix and Amazon and all, uh, companies where people are subscribing and watching a lot of video. Exactly. Or cable. Yeah, that's exactly right. So it's then that's where it really starts to get interesting is where you start to see the, the confluence of all these various types of media entering into the, you know, into, into a single space. Uh, and suddenly you've got all these major publishers next to folks who maybe weren't major publishers a year ago and suddenly they've got they've got audience so it's 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 going to be a very 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 interesting couple of years it, it seems daunting but the point of this discussion today we've thrown out a bunch of information is that marketers businesses large medium small can think through their strategy and make it focused and strategic and a strategic strategy, but come up with something and a plan that really makes sense and they're not wasting their time on platforms where they just don't need to be. That's ex- exactly right. So there's, you have so many options and a lot of people don't know, should I be on Facebook? Should I be on Instagram? I don't have a Pinterest account. Right. It, the, what I try to help folks do and what I encourage folks to do is just think about what it is that you're trying to achieve and just build your strategy back from that. And if you start doing that, it just things get a lot easier. You don't have to make as many decisions and and you'll have a better chance of getting the results that you're looking for. And whether you're doing video on Facebook or you're on Twitter and that's how you're spreading a message uh, or, or, or another platform you can look at the results immediately. Right. It and, doesn't, I mean, you can change, you can shift that strategy and, and go another direction. Exactly. And one of the great things about digital is that you get you get almost instantaneous feedback on what you're doing. And that's, and we didn't even get into that too much, but really, you know, you, at that point, once you've, once you've identified all of those other elements, you start programming to those, then you can start testing it, A-B testing it and start and figure out what's working, what's not, what are the signals that are buried within there that we should be following What's not worth the time and the, the investment? And that's where a, a longer strategy is really helpful because it gives you time to really hone that message and start to uh, zero in on those results. I assume there's times uh, when a business doesn't need to do video. <laughs> there's other ways of getting a message out there. You focus on video, but there are certainly uh, the tried and true methods of being on social media and attracting a community and starting conversations that don't have to be video related. Sure. Or maybe I, it's just not in your, your wheelhouse, I mean, I, so to speak. Well, what I would say is, again, it just comes down to what it is that, that you're trying to achieve. Absolutely. There may be times when uh, you're trying to get a message across and your audience just isn't an audience that is looking for video in that area, yeah. and that's okay. Um, it just so happens that video is one of the uh, most impactful ways of communication. Yeah. So it tends to be something that... Uh, it's it's why I'm in this business and why I love working in video because it is so impactful and um, and, and you get to see the, the reaction of your audience and have that connection. Well said. All right. Well, we certainly like the uh, audio form of communication here and uh, and the podcasts, which have been around for a long time. Uh, Full disclosure, James and I did a podcast, what, like 25 years ago before they started? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it was quite that long. 30 years ago. Yeah. Uh, James, it's great to have you here with us. Uh, and if people would like to learn more about how you can help their business grow, where can they go? Then go to dvsgo.com. So digitalvideostrategies.com uh, as well. So dvsgo, that's that's the one. That's where they should, they should take a look and see. And I'm 
be happy to help them out. Okay, great. Thanks a lot for your time. Uh, really great information. If you'd like to learn more about the BBB, visit us at BBB.org. For the Better Business, Better Series podcast, I'm Will Johnson. You just enjoyed Better Business, Better Series podcast. Be sure to tune in next month for a brand new episode. To learn more about our other shows, visit betterbusiness.blueberry.com. That's betterbusiness.blubrry.com and subscribe. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guests, not those of the Better Business Bureau, Council of Better Business Bureaus, or program affiliates. This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Blueberry's Terms of Service.